In recent years, or maybe I should say in the last decade, Substance Painter has made a name for itself. Maybe you are aware of it or maybe not, but Substance Painter dominated the game development industry almost overnight. But was that because it was too good, or maybe because there were no other alternatives? But what if I told you that there is, on the other hand, a very good alternative or a competitor that has been around for many, many, many years, and it is called Mari. Popular among VFX professionals, but it is mighty in its own right. Now, what is the difference between the two, and what are the strengths and weaknesses of the two, and which one of these tools is actually better and why? But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Blender market is having right now a huge sale, where you can save 25% or more on over 11,000 Blender add-ons, courses, models, you name it. And by the way, if you don't know where to start, you will find a list in the description of this video with the best add-ons in all categories. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. But before we get into the comparison, I think it is important for us to understand first how we got here in the first place, don't you think? So the story of Mari finds its origins deep within the offices of Fora Digital during the production of the now iconic first iteration of Avatar. Jack Grizzly, who was a senior R&D or research and development software engineer at the company back in the days, recalls that when the Avatar production was just starting, when I took a good and hard look at the available painting software in the market and said none of it was good enough to bring the magical world of Pandora to life. So in a true Wada spirit, they said, forget it, let's make one ourselves. And later on, the texturing department took charge of the mission, with the aspiration of creating a software capable of handing the massively complex and highly detailed textures that were required for that movie. And these efforts were what gave birth to the legendary software called Mari, a name inspired by the Swahili word Mari Dadi, which means beautiful and also a sense of usefulness. However, Fate eventually led the software to the hands of another industry titan, which is a company called The Foundry, the company that had already made a legendary software like Nuke, which is the leading VFX compositing software in VFX productions. So when the chance to acquire Mari came along, they didn't let it slip. But how did they do that, you may ask? In an interview given to FX Guide after the takeover, Bill Collins, the CEO of the Foundry at the time, shed light on what made Mari so attractive to them. The fascinating thing for us, he explained, is that it gave them access to a software that has already been production proven. You know, it just made way more sense for them to get this technology to the public and the industry at large, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel from scratch themselves. And after a few years, on the other side of the world, between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Sea, a French company called Algorithmic was making a name for itself in the game development industry. And by 2013, following the success of Substance Designer 4, their first truly really successful product from a business standpoint and the first PBR ready art tool, and it was successful because there was a desperate need in the community and the industry of 3D for a solution to paint directly on 3D models. Well, fast forward to GDC 2014, the public beta of Substance Painter was dropped, and let me tell you, it was a massive hit, with tons of licenses flying off the shelves, and practically overnight, Substance Painter claimed the throne as the industry standard texturing software in the video game industry. And in a similar fashion to Mari, Painter along with the rest of the Substance set of tools caught the eyes of another industry giant called Adobe, who acquired Algorithmic back in 2019. And with that, I think the story or the background of each software is clear. And now the question is, which one comes on top and where each one of them excels most? In all honesty, at the first glance, these two software might seem like they are cut from the same cloth. But once you start digging in, you will find a whole galaxy of differences between them. So let's start with Mari. As you might have guessed, it is a texture creation software or a texture painting software that uses a combination between a non-destructive layer creation and node-based systems. But how? When you open the program for the first time, it can seem a bit intimidating. 
with all the menus and buttons staring back at you. But don't worry about that because it is very simple in its spirit. For starters, we have what is known as paint buffer, which is an invisible rectangle that is used to paint on 3D objects. And as long as the painter buffer is still not applied, you can adjust it however you want. But also, you can tweak the resolution and all the good stuff, such as the use of multiple buffers per model with a varying resolution that can go up to 32K. Yes, 32K, which is really, really interesting. To back this up, we have a bunch of other tools that come with it, along with all the typical settings that you would expect. If you have ever used a software like Photoshop or Funny Enough, even Painter, it comes with a similar structure, with all the basic structures like size and opacity, up to the advanced ones like custom brush creation and the renowned projection tools, which is a fancier way to say painting, with the use of higher resolution texture maps. And by the way, it is the bread and butter of the tool, since Mari is known for its incredible projection capabilities. But that's only one side of the formula, because we also have the node-based workflow. If you have ever played around with nodes in programs like Blender, it is pretty much the same deal. We have the principal BRDF, and with it you can connect all your nodes, and you have nodes that represent each one of your layers, and others for channels like roughness, bump, and so on. And the rest represents the likes of painting node or transparency. The layer nodes also have a masking section that you can add masks into and apply to textures only into specific parts based on the mask pattern, which can be further adjusted. And as you know, since they are nodes, we can add as much as we want to make even bigger formations and even more complex materials and textures. On the other hand, the alternative, which is Substance Painter, stands as a purely layer-based software with a much more simplified user interface. As we can see, we have things like brush layer to paint directly on top of your 3D objects. You can also adjust and load different brushes as well as paint layer to add materials into with all the channels such as basic color, metallic and roughness. But to be honest, this is not where the power of Substance Painter lies. The true potential of the software is in its procedural workflow with smart materials and masks. For the first time, you can find pre-made material presets that combine multiple texture channels and effects, and it adapts and reacts realistically to your models in a smart way. For example, adding more dirt into the areas that have more shadows, just like how it would happen in real life. And in a similar vein, smart masks or generators, which are procedural solutions that automatically generate and apply masks, like rust or edgeware, based on various criteria such as curvature, ambient occlusion, position, and more, in addition to a series of filters and special effects to support this workflow, and many adjustable parameters to edit the various aspects of the smart masks and generators. Based on that, we can conclude that Substance Painter is king when it comes to quickly and automatically generated materials, while at the same time still offering an excellent level of manual painting abilities. Whereas Mari, on the other hand, leans more towards manual painting, and when it comes to the other stuff, it is a bit more complex. The positive thing about Mari is that it can handle extremely large textures much better than Substance and it is easier and more versatile to generate high resolution with it, thanks to the paint buffer workflow, and besides, the nodes make it better to come up with complex results. It is also worth mentioning that both support UDIMs, which divides the model into different UV tiles, allowing you to use multiple texture maps per model. However, on the other hand, Mari, in my opinion, can handle a bigger number of high resolution UDIMs even better. And from what I can see, when it comes to difficult tasks, especially in VFX, that require many UDIMs and extremely high resolution textures and materials, Mari is absolutely king, or queen depending on how you see it. In the early days, Mari was famously known for its high res textures and projections and the ability to handle heavy geometry in addition to high resolutions, plus its support for multiple UDIMs, which made it a fan favorite or industry favorite in VFX, and it was used in projects such as Planet of the Apes, in addition to Game of Thrones, and other popular projects like these. Meanwhile, Substance Painter was more known for its procedural workflow and PBR real-time texturing, making it a better choice for video game development or real-time productions, as it is heavily used in the game development industry, and pretty much every video game you see is using it across the board. Over the years though, these two rivals 
started to step into each other's territories thanks to introducing new and innovative features. However, they still held on to their core philosophies. So when it comes down to picking one, again, it really depends on your needs and your projects. Just like how a senior log development artist said, if you want to work on hero assets for film, Mari is the only answer. But for environment assets, I think Substance Painter is better suited. Some environment artists don't have enough time or knowledge to paint textures from scratch, nor is it really needed. And some well-done presets and paintwork done with care in Substance are good. Then that could be applied to a bunch of other assets, but for anything hero asset related, then Mari without a question. That was an opinion of an industry professional, and with that we conclude the video. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.